Hi, and thanks for clicking the link to watch the second video in our Financial Terms You May Have Missed in School series of financial literacy videos. I'm Coach Troy from the Metro Lutheran Ministry Financial Opportunity Center, or FOC. And today we're going to go over another 10 terms that many people don't understand as well as they should. The first word is producer. Now, a producer is the term used in financial terms to describe any individual or business that makes goods or provides services to be sold. So a farmer is a producer of food. And if you work on the assembly line, you produce the cars. This term is often thought of in connection with the next term, consumer. Now a consumer is anyone who buys goods or services for their personal use. So when you buy a brand new radio or a loaf of bread, you are a consumer. However, when a car company buys parts to put into their cars and then sells the car, while they are consuming something, it's part of the overall product that they're making. So even the pricing changes, which is why you hear about buying things at wholesale. Usually the base price paid when buying something for resale later, or retail the price paid by the end consumer. Now this next term is usually called by three letters, FSA, which stand for flexible spending account. Now this term refers to a benefit that some employers may offer you. An FSA or flexible spending account lets you contribute a percentage of your salary before it's taxed into a special account. You can then spend from this special account to purchase approved categories of items. Now, typically, these are items related to health care, like prescriptions, band-aids, dentures, contact lenses, and such. So an FSA provides you with a tax advantage, resulting in you paying less taxes. So if this is an option for you, you may want to consider taking advantage of it. Capital. Now, this is the first of three definitions related to one concept. Capital, our first term, simply refers to most categories of assets that you could use to support your business or your day-to-day -day living expenses. Capital can refer to the cash that you have available to you through savings accounts or checking accounts. It might refer to the stocks that you may own or bonds that you purchase. It even refers to property that you own, like your house. Capital gain is the second term, and this refers to the value of the capital you own. For example, if you buy a stock for $500 and it grows in value to $1,000, you have a capital gain of $500. The same concept applies to the value of your home or perhaps a classic car that you own. If it appreciates or goes up in value, it's a capital gain. And number three in this financial terms related to capital, of course, is the dreaded capital gains tax. Now you have to report these increases in value for your capital assets to the IRS. And when you do, you'll have to pay a special tax on that increased value. And that tax is rather unoriginally called the capital gains tax. Now the next concept is passive income. And passive income has been called the magic bullet for those who want to retire young. Passive income refers to creating an income source that does not require you to actively do very much. Unlike your normal job, where you must go to work for a certain number of hours every week in order to be paid, a passive income stream doesn't require you to do much. So if you own a house and you rent it out to someone, you get the rental income every month, but you're not constantly working on that rental unit. In fact, if things have gone well, you're barely worried about it at all. Now, if you manage to buy the right mix of stocks, the dividends and capital gains from those stocks could become a source of passive income. Passive income looked at another way is money that you literally make while you are sleeping. Compound interest. Now, compound interest is a simple yet very powerful concept. Compound interest refers to the practice of earning interest on a deposit and leaving that interest in the account. So when the next interest accrues, 
it's figured not only on the principal amount that you had put in, but also on the interest that you earned the last time. This can help your money grow if it's working for you, and it can also ruin you quickly if compound interest is being used on any debt that you may owe. As you can see in the graphic, normal or simple interest is represented on the left. But if you had compounding in it, look at the difference that makes over that period of time. So be aware of and understand the concept of compound interest. The time cost of money. Now this concept is an important one to understand why people ask you to put a priority and why you should place earning and saving money now as a higher goal, as opposed to putting it off and doing it later. The time cost of money refers to the fact that if you have $20 today, it is worth more to you than having $20 next month. You see, if you put that $20 today into even a basic savings account, it will earn interest. So in a month, you would have that original $20 plus any interest it earned. Whereas if you just wait a month to get $20, all you're gonna have at that moment is $20. Now, obviously, if you do something more profitable with that $20 in the interim, that time cost of money would be even larger. Now, our final term for this video is liquidity. Liquidity refers to your ability to use the cash value of any asset you may own right now. For example, if you have $200 in your checking account, all you have to do to use that $200 is simply write a check or use your debit card. That's very liquid. It could flow right into paying for whatever you needed. Now you may have a lot of equity in your home. Let's say you have $20,000 in equity that you could use. However, you'd have to go through a banking process that could take a week or a month prior to you being able to use that money. That money has less liquidity than the cash in your pocket. Another example is you may have put money into a certificate of deposit. You cannot touch that money until the term is ended in say six months. So during that time, that asset is the least liquid of the three examples. I hope these terms help you to understand what's going on in your financial world a little bit better. Remember, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you want to learn more, call us at 816-285-3131. And as always, remember, be the pig.